Welcome to another unboxing from theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. Today I'm I'm unboxing a newish game from White Dog Games. And if you don't know much about White Dog Games and you're a war gamer, you need to find out about them as soon as you can. They have a lot of very interesting games. About six or eight months ago, I bought my first White Dog Games. I bought Don't Don't uh, Tread on Me, which is a look at the American Revolutionary War. And you play, in that game, you play the side of the British. So you're not the traditional taking the Patriots or Colonials through the game. You're trying to defeat them. I've also played Solitaire Caesar. I bought Reconquista, uh, which is a look at um, Spain during the 11 1200s where El Cid uh, worked and, and the Moors and the Christians were fighting. Very interesting games, well made, great components, fairly easy to play, and all these games that I have mentioned are solitaire games. So this is another solitaire game by Ben Madison, you can see right there. If you don't know who Ben Madison is, you're missing out as well. I've played about five of his games. One of my favorite of his is Mound Builders from Victory Point Games, where you take pre-Columbian uh, Native American cultures through their rise and fall and fighting off the Spaniards. So Ben Madison knows how to design a good solo game. He has a string of games where he focuses on the alternative side of typically what you would see played in a solo game. So in this game, as you can tell from the title, Jeff Davis, the Confederacy at War, this is an American Civil War game where you are in control of Jeff Davis, you are playing as Jeff Davis, trying to make the strategic level decisions regarding your troops, their disposition, their locations, the generals. Also, you're trying to protect your fledgling economy, because as we all know, you can't fight a war without money behind it. You're trying to take care of railroads, you're trying to run blockades, do other skirmishes, behind the line bushwhacking and raids like Morgan's Raid in Northern Kentucky, Southern Indiana, which is something I grew up knowing about because I'm from Indiana. So a very interesting game that, you know, once again, takes a look at the strategic level of the Civil War plays in a couple of hours, and it's a solo game. So I'm very excited about this. White Dog wanted us to do a review of this game. They provided this copy for me. I'm now doing an unboxing. I haven't played it yet because I'm still deep in the throes of Don't Tread on Me. I played that game three or four times, and it's a long one, three to four hours, and I'm writing about it on the blog, so I have not had an opportunity to get to this one. So anyway, very excited about this, although I want to I want to make a statement here. This game is a little concerning to me to unbox or even to play or write about at this time in our nation's uh, history. The economic and the social issues that are ongoing, as those things are working themselves out and hopefully things are changing for the better or getting back to normal, we're also under a, a pandemic. Uh, quarantine is over, but we're still still dealing with the virus. This game, once again, you are playing the quote-unquote enemy or bad guy or, you know, the traitors. They are the ones that broke away from the United States. They were the ones that were fighting over the concept of states' rights. But really, in reality, it was the right to hold and own slaves to run their economy. I am by no means an advocate of that. My ancestors grew up in the South. I'm sure through my lines there were, were different uh, periods and uh, situations where they dealt with slaves in certain ways. Obviously, I believe slavery is wrong. I believe racism is wrong, and those are things that I'm against. I don't know that I need to say that. I think you know that from watching us and seeing us and seeing who we are. But when I'm playing a game like this, I wanted to make sure that you understood that. I am not an adherent to the noble cause or lost cause concept. You know, the American Civil War was fought. There was a great loss of life over that uh, period. And it was all because someone wanted to do something that wasn't what the nation wanted to do. They broke away. So anyway, with that said, I'm not going to mention that again. Slavery is a prominent portion of this game. And it is not the concept of 
you know, getting slaves or keeping slaves or doing those kinds of things, you are using those slaves as a resource. You're using them to bolster the economy or do certain things and protect those resources. So I'm going to be honest here. I don't know that I've ever played a, an American Civil War game where slaves were introduced in that way or even really referenced or talked about. So I would say bravo to Ben Madison, bravo to White Dog Games for being willing to publish this. And I think it's going to be an interesting and eye-opening experience for those who play it, especially for me, because I think I'm going to learn some things. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So let's go ahead. Without further ado, this is an unboxing. And if you don't know much about White Dog Games and their packages, these are very thin, small boxes. You can buy these games in polybag editions. This game on the market would cost about $50. Um, it's a print-on-demand model, so you're not going to find this on Amazon. You're not going to find it on uh, th those other elements, those online retailers. But you're going to order it, pay. Within 10 to 12 days, you're going to get your game and then play it. But you can buy a polybag game, which is usually about $10 cheaper. The ones that I've bought, I bought the boxed editions because they look better on the shelf. I like them better and I paid that extra 10 bucks. I thought it was worth it. So you're paying, in essence, 10 bucks for this very nice looking box. But it's a small box, but you can see on the spine, they have the title there written very well. So this is gonna show very well on your, uh, on your bookshelf with your collection. So I think it's a good thing in that respect. Let's go ahead and open up, open up the game and show you the different contents. So here's the rule book. You'll notice it's not glossy. It's not overly illustrated. It is very tense, uh, dense text-wise uh, and, and does have some examples. So these blue things are examples, this blue text. Sometimes these gray boxes are things that you really need to focus on or pay attention to. That also makes them a little more easier to reference when you're playing the game. You can see the rule book, though, is, and it goes to the very end. Yeah, once again, I, did, I think it's 13 pages. Yeah, it's 14 pages with that last page. There's 13. 14 pages. There's some special rules in it. You have the general rules that will get you through the game. I would recommend those as you play this for the first time. My experience with these games have been that the rules are fairly clear, but they're very, very dense. You're going to have to read this rule book a couple of times and push some counters around to really understand it and understand the impacts. But frankly... And we'll get to the player aid. I think there's a decent player aid in here. But really, the games are, are their case. So you can see 8.2.1, 8.2.2. To me, that's really good because then I can refer to that. And sometimes in the rules, they will say, during this phase, check out 8.3, where you can talk about plantations, um, etc. So that's kind of the way that the rules are laid out. Very well done, I think, and functional which I think is a good thing because when you're playing a solo game, you're the adjudicator. You're the one that's going to make the, you're going to read the rules. You're going to understand the concepts and then you're going to make a decision about how you enact those rules. So here's a look. It's a single counter sheet. These are laser cut counters. They have that little bit of a smoky smell or burned wood smell, which I really like. This is the front side of those counters. You can see these are various markers. There are different administrative elements like Jefferson Davis, some of the different uh, economic aspects. You have industry, you have cotton, um, and then your railroad is also very, very important. Here's some of those units. You have trains, artillery, bushwhacking units, which are you're behind the line, insurgents, defensive works. Here you have campaign failure. Not sure how that works. And then here are the different leaders. You can see there's McClellan, the union leaders on the bottom. McClellan, Butler, Grant, and then President Lincoln, and the different army markers, Army of the Gulf, the Cumberland, and the Middle Department. And then there's some more plantation, factory, and railroad markers. And then here's some of the other different units. You can see you have your uh, Confederate leaders at the top. You have some, some Confederate units, and then some various markers that are different conditions that events will happen or certain things will happen and you'll place those markers as a mnemonic device to remind yourself of what's going on. These markers are very well done. 
Uh, you do not need to clip these. Let's go ahead and punch one of these out. And I always try to be very, very careful because even though they're laser cut, sometimes they do stick and you'll end up ripping one. But here is a counter that represents uh, Robert E. Lee, who's one of the, obviously, the uh, Confederate commanders. And it's very well cut when you clip those out. The only problem I have with them is they do have a bit of nub uh, on them. But you can, if you're, if you're interested, use an X-Acto knife and get those off. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the components. Here is, here's a display, kind of your record track. You have blockade runners display at the top. You have control of the, diff the different areas, your treasury. Here is the calendar. So you're going to play this through each month. Certain things are going to happen like here in the red text, July of 1861, Kentucky vote. There's a Kentucky raid that's going to happen. So those are different things that will happen uh, throughout the game. Um, and then if you, I guess, don't win the game by the end, the concept is that the British and French potentially come in on the different sides uh, and, and kind of try to settle the Civil War and it ends it. So you're going to lose, I think, if you get to that point and have not, uh, have not won it. So anyway, that's a look at the what I would call the turn record track. And then here you've got a couple of player aids. You've got a good sequence of play, which is very, very important. And once again, remember I re referenced the case uh, layout of the rule book. Yeah, there you can see generals 4.1. So you're going to go into the rule book and look at 4.1. Here's the different elements explained with all of those case points. So you can readily reference those in the book or in the rule book. Here are the, uh, I guess, for your counter tray for easy setup. That's interesting. So you're going to put your counters. I will probably not use a counter tray. Maybe I will. Um, I didn't use them in my other ones because there's only about 30 or 40 counters and it's not that big of a deal to look through them. But anyway, that's that aid. Kind of a simple one. And then here's a counter ID card. This is very helpful in case you lose a counter and you don't remember what it looked like. You can actually get on this photocopy it, and I think in the rule book it references that you can do that so you have the permission cut it out and do a replacement counter. So I think that's a good thing. Here on the back, uh, these are different reminders for certain rules. Once again, see those gray boxes? I'm sorry, the sun's going in and out right now and I feel like it's getting dark. Uh, but you can see there, there's some different reminders, different rule elements, so you don't have to refer back to the rule book. You can keep this here on the, on the board as you play and, and easily reference that. Uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and look at the map. I'm going to go ahead and move these all over so I can get a good flat layout of the map. The map is not huge. It's basically a letter si or a legal size sheet of paper, 11 by 17. Um, you can see it's pretty colorful. Let's go ahead and, sorry, I laid that out and it's not even showing up in the, in the rules. But you can see it's very colorful. Here's kind of the different tracks, your agriculture, your manufacturing, and your infrastructure, railroads, basically. Here's the campaign track on the bottom, the different boxes, uh, Jackson, the Delta, Atlanta, Savannah, Fayetteville, etc. There are different boxes, Kirk's Raiders, Heartland Defensive, Morgan's Raid. There are freedmen because slaves are going to escape, I assume via events or other uh, elements, loss of battles in areas, and they're going to make their way to the north, and I think that's going to reduce your victory points uh, at the end. Once again, a little bit of a touchy subject. You'll notice you're going to hold your slave counters here in the center, um, and you're going to use those in your economy to uh, get done what you, what you need to get done. Uh, different pools for your units. So the map's very well laid out. I, I've enjoyed these maps. They're very colorful. They're boxes, so they're abstracted. But you can always see they've got a copy of the actual, you know, period map behind it. So it gets you that theme. It, it gets you involved in the game because you do feel that it's not just a bunch of boxes. So very, I, you know, these games are very well done. They're very colorful. I have enjoyed uh, my plays of the other games in the system. Really have had a good time with them feel like they are well done and worth investigating. So I definitely recommend 
if you're interested in these styles of games, these solitaire war games, and don't mind playing a game that is trying to teach history, because once again, nobody wants to talk about the issue of slavery, but I think this game does tackle that head on and kind of shows what happened a little bit. So anyway, that's a look at Jeff Davis, The Confederacy at War from White Dog Games, a game that I'm gonna get on my table fairly soon. I've had it for about two weeks. I've been finishing other games, but I'm, this is probably the next game up on my table. So I've been Grant for the Player's Aid. I hope you liked the video and uh, look for some written content as well as a video review sometime in the near future. Thank you.